Okay, I'm gonna walk you through putting these borders on this quilt tonight. Very fun, one of the things I love to do are these three-dimensional flange borders. I think they make it look like it's matted and framed like a photograph would be. Makes it real fun and clean to finish. I really like using the black as an exterior. It's kind of that lemony uh, butter yellow color in the background. This should really pop when we're all done. So follow along as I'm going to take you through putting these borders on the quilt. Okay, we're back at the cutting room here and we're going to get ready to make and uh, prep out for our borders. I'm going to cut two pieces of fabric. My dark gray that you see behind me here is my interior or my flange border. A flange is a piping with no piping in it or a flat three-dimensional border. The raw, um, raw edges are buried. The finished edges will stick into the quilt. I showed you that just a moment ago on the finished product. And also the black you see way over there in the background. Uh, that is going to be the exterior border. I do a lot with solid black, um, jet black from Michael Miller on the exterior borders because I love that crisp, clean, matted, painted finish, um, making it look like my art quilts are more of a framed piece of uh, painted art versus uh, textile art. Not that I have a problem with textile art, don't get me wrong. I love the textiles, but here we go. So my interior flange, uh, I cut those at one inch. They fold in half, so they become half inch. Lose two quarter inch seam allowances, one from each raw edge. Now it becomes a quarter inch showing. My black is gonna be cut at two and a half inches. So I prep all my, uh, my work for my borders and then I'm gonna stitch them into place in just a moment. I'll also show you that. Okay, when cutting, I like to start with a uh, solid line on my ruler right across the base of the fold of the fabric. That is my true line. I do not use the ruler lines on, or the lines on my um, mat when cutting. Nice, clean, even pressure there. It is almost time for a new blade. Don't be cheap. Replace your blades often, ladies and a gentleman out there. It's much better for everyone. Now I'm flipping this over. Remember, one inch for the interior flange border. That's going to be pressed with the right sides out and stitched into place with both raw edges hidden in there. I need four of these. There's one. I also like to cut my selvages off before I get started even using the borders. Early on in my art quilt career, I would flip quilts over and find selvages showing in all kinds of places they didn't belong. So I've just kind of learned in my life, what I'll do is I'm going to stack all of my cuts, my strips, my borders, whatever you want to call them, coming just past those little holes that are the pinholes that the machinery pulls the fabric through on and slice away. So those are clean edges, ready to rock and roll. And now I'm going to cut a two and a half inch for my exterior border. That's two and a half inches for the exterior. So I've got one of those tricky rulers. It's got a half inch marking on one side, so I've also flipped my ruler. I'm gonna need four of these. Okay, we're over at the ironing station now. Basically, for the ironing of the uh, exterior borders, the black portion of my quilt, it's real simple. I'm just gonna iron them nice and flat, get the creases out. Uh, one of the things I like to do, if I'm gonna steam anything or mist anything, I do all of it. It's either all or nothing. If I steam just the spot or the crease in the fabric, often uh, what will happen is that part will pre-shrink. And I sew fast, so it doesn't shrink until it's in the quilt, making a pucker later on. So anyways, that's these folds here in the fabric. Oh, I got a black t-shirt on, you can't even see that either. There, it's those folds in the fabric. Uh, anyways, those things there will be harder to press out. Um, and then with the interior flange, the darker gray fabric for this particular quilt, I'm gonna actually, like I said earlier, press it in half with the right sides out. I'm making a finished edge piping that I'm gonna insert uh, via the sewing machine in just a moment here. Trusty old iron, old being the key term. Just a night light, nice light pressing. Okay, so just in case you're just waking up or tuning in to what we're doing, this is putting together the uh, strips or the prep work for the borders on the quilt. I'm gonna now press the interior or the flange binding. I've chosen a solid because I happen to be working on a portrait quilt and the gray is what I need. But, so it's gonna be harder for you to see at home on camera. This is technically the right sides out. So I'm flipping it because I'm going to iron it in half 
right sides out. Quick reminder, this was a one inch cut. It's gonna be folded in half to make a half of an inch, stitched in with a quarter seam inch seam allowance, and therefore we're going to finish with a quarter inch of three dimensional piping in our borders. I'll be showing you that in a bit. I just get my corner started and work ever so slowly. I really wanna take my time and make sure this ironing process works out clean because I am actually going to stitch both the exterior black border and this interior flanged binding, or I keep calling it binding, I apologize, this flange border or interior border all in the stroke of one needle. I am not gonna sew one and then the other. So I wanna press this really nice because I'm gonna rely on my clean edges to help me maintain a good, crisp, quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, so I've got a couple of these pieces pressed. I think I'm gonna let the magic of television take over and you'll see me next at the sewing machine getting ready to insert these beautiful interior flange borders.